incoming transmission. Many of the galactic assault maps we have in the game conclude with final fights that takes place within relatively confined spaces. The goal behind this is to create as much intensity as we can. We wanted the final stages of a map to feel like all that warfare. This has been achieved by us creating scenarios that cause both attackers and defenders to funnel into one final fight location. We have seen feedback that our community would like us to try and do less of this and instead it with something more open. We have experimented with this already in the final part of Kessel. Extraction is a good example. For Geonosis, we are looking to take it a step further. The final two phases are very open, which makes it ideal for the EQ-based combat and gives it its own identity and gameplay experience that is different from what is currently available within Galactic Assault. The centerpiece of Geonosis is the ATE. The six-legged armored walker is fully controllable and plays a vital role on the battlefront. One of the key differences between the ATE and any other vehicle in the game is that they are dynamically dropped in real time into the playable space as the battle goes on. This creates a lot of interesting scenarios and we are excited to see how this plays out once Geonosis arrives later this month. What this also means is that you will not be able to pick the ATE from the spawn screen. You will encounter them within the environment itself. One might be dropped in just ahead of you. Or you might turn a corner to see one, ready and waiting for you to jump in. Reactivate a damage to TE. The first phase is very much focused on infantry combat with the clones needing to call in reinforcements and reactivate a damage to TE. During this phase, the objective of the droids is to stop them. This phase will take place in typical Geonosian cantons with plenty of pathways and cover available. Hard till troop transport. The second phase marks the shift from infantry to vehicle combat. With vehicles now coming into play, the time canyons will give way to a fast battlefront, meaning a change of tactics and gameplay will be required. The objective during this phase is to bring down or defend, depending on your team. Two hearts and troop transports. Mechanically and gameplay-wise, this objective is a mixture of the destroy objective, as seen on crate with the generators and walkers. The hearts and troop transports are static objects that the cloners need to destroy before they run out of tickets. However, they need to be weakened before serious damage can be dealt to them, similarly to walkers. This can be achieved by using the special ability of the ATEs. This ties into the overarching theme of genosis of the ATEs being the cornerstone of the battle. Secure turbulences. The third phase is an all-out attack by the cloners. Their goal is to recapture some abandoned turbulences to take down the droid core ship. During this phase, the droids must do everything they can to defend the turbulences or loss will be a minute. Gameplay-wise, this is a capture point, but with a twist. As noted earlier, we needed the one to create a narrow funnel towards the end of this battle. So this capture point is actually around 200 meters wide. You may be inclined to think that this could turn into an infinitely contested objective. To prevent this from occurring, the capture point can only be captured by the ATEs. In addition to this, the capture can't be contested. This creates a scenario where the clones know that they need to escort their ATEs into the area so they can capture it. At the same time, the droids can see these slow moving giants approach from a distance and plan accordingly. The intent here is to create the feeling of a battle where the game is not won or lost by a single person sneaking in and taking an objective. Rather, it's an entire army moving forward and playing the objective together. With the difference in objectives coming into play, we had to change up the way reinforcements work. Usually, one reinforcement equals one trooper. However, for the second and third phases, one reinforcement will equal one of TE. This means that dying as a clone trooper during these phases won't drain your team's tickets. The transition from trooper reinforcements to TE reinforcements happens between phase one and two to give all droids a chance to help. We use missile launchers, as seen in all of the phases, in a slightly different way. There will be more of these available. The range much longer than normal and the lock-on time very short. In addition to this, droids won't be marked while holding the launcher by the other team. However, they won't make the ATE weakened. Instead, they just deal damage. To bring this battle fully to life, a lot of things are going on outside the playable space, something we're calling the living world. The vistas and the feeling of a massive battle going on is crucial to delivering this experience. You're not just fighting with your squad. You're fighting with your squad as part of a huge planetary battle that is raging on all around you. Fighting through dense sandstorm is one of the most iconic scenes from Geonosis and something we really wanted to recreate. 
the sandstorm will occur during the transition from phase two to three when the fine parts of troop transport has been destroyed. While fighting through the sandstorm, visibility is heavily reduced and, even though you were fighting in a completely open area, you feel like it's close range gameplay. Running through the storm with blaster bolts flying everywhere is a great experience and definitely something which adds to the unique gameplay experience that Geonosis will offer. As the clones fight their way towards the dirt blazes, they will have to clear out quite a few homing spider droids. These droids will deal significant damage to both the T's and troopers if not taken care of. Their presence means that the T's can't just blindly keep walking forward towards the next objective. Creating a new planet always brings its own set of challenges and Geonosis was no different. The main challenge for us was around the T's. We wanted the T to be needed to succeed to create team player focus to find around these six leg giants. However, what happens if people don't know how to weaken the hearts or sort of move forward during phase three? Our user interface and voiceover lines play a vital role here. It's something we have worked a lot on already and are still working on ahead of its release. Looking at it from the droid's perspective, the same thing could happen. If no one is trying to take down the ATEs, then it will probably be an easy victory for the clones. While we have been playing Geonosis ourselves, we can never know for sure how battles will play out until it is released. Players will always find ways to play across planets in ways that we hadn't thought of, but we will certainly be paying close attention and will adapt if things aren't working as well as they should. This is amplified somewhat by the change of gameplay compared to other galactic assault planets. However, we feel that changing the gameplay like this will add more value for our players than just making another classic phase. Geonosis will release later this month alongside the Battle of Geonosis update. We've got more to talk about, starting with vehicles and then on to Obi-Wan Kenobi himself. As always, please do leave your feedback in the comment threads below. We look forward to deploying onto Geonosis with you this month. But one last thing, before we sign off we thought we'd give you a behind the scenes glimpse of some work in progress shots of Obi-Wan Kenobi. An early test of Obi-Wan Kenobi's idle animation. Please note that this is from early in development and when he arrives, he will be wielding his blue lightsaber. An early work in progress look at Obi-Wan Kenobi's Jedi robes.